Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to this Adamant Cup group round week one match of Final Fantasy IV Free Enterprise between Boney C, a sort of newer face in the community, I believe started in tournaments around ZZ4 last year, and Beer Nerd, a sort of long-term veteran who's been around for as far back as the Fabul Gauntlet. I'm Enth, and joining me on the Restream team today is Dishmu on the Restream, uh, Judge Joe on the tracking, and my co-commentator today, Deathlike. How are you doing today, Deathlike? I'm doing all right. I mean, doing this at least afternoon my time. I mean, usually it's like prime time, but this is change of pace because, I don't know, there's a rush of games later later on today, so might as well get get, get it out of the way. Yeah. But, uh, looking, I'm looking forward to this race. Uh, look quick look over the objectives we just have one major uh moon objective the rest are like the rest are primarily on underground which is which is great well at least on the on the on the overworld underground so that's like so that at least we don't have to worry too much unless some of the key, uh, key items that we find uh could uh be a chain so we might have so moon dot Moon dive is necessary, though, so no worries. No worries there. Absolutely. We've got one of my favorite combinations of objectives possible in this flag set, too, which is that trade away both tails, the pink tail on that objective one, the rat tail on objective five. And I like seeing that because it ends up being one of those situations of, OK, you have the hook, you have the pink tail. You can get that adamant armor from the pink tail at any point in time. When are you going to trade away that pink tail, or are you just going to hold out for a rat tail because you think you're strong enough? I, I think well, it depends on. Uh, well, we had we started earth crystals, so I guess we're going to loot, loot hard, <laughs> loot often early. I mean, so I may I think in this flex that uh, trade owning the pink tail might be less necessary. I mean, because in my opinion, like with with T wildish being. Uh, being enabled and loot goes up to tier seven. Um, the, all, we all got plenty of good stuff that we, even if it's not a crystal sword or the or the adamant itself. I mean, you don't. You, it doesn't take too much to get uh, up uh, up uh, powered up. I mean, this this there's lots of loot and we'll be and ov and obviously l later areas have a better chance of loot. But getting it early, I mean. It, you, the adamant is not as required, not as not as necessary to complete a seed. So I think I would defer. I mean, try to just try to uh, sync it up if we get the uh, rat tail on top of that. Of course, we need the hook before we even think of trading it in. Well, I think that uh, question just got completely erased, anyways, as it is the rat tail from Edward here in the bed in Troya. So gonna have that rat tail no matter what always gonna have that efficiency either way and that kind of just does uh make things a bit interesting because that's that's another secondary question too is all right you have the rat tail when you get the hook do you turn that in maybe hope for a magma key if you're looking at a hook route or something like that or do you just say you know what i'm gonna keep going and just set off this for right now and we are going to see some interesting stuff in this treasury though with a stardust rod and a heroin rope well, for I saw a lot more axes, <laughs> axes over ten for me. But uh, that's good if we find a Rydia. But um, that that's a good comment. But we don't know if she shows up. But the Stardust Rod will get even a Palom, ha make a Palom happy. Uh, and Heron Robe makes uh, any of these uh, three characters, three female characters, uh, become really useful. In an in, at an, an instant, so that's always useful. As for the rat tail, I think you need that because need to trade that in earlier, if at all. I mean, you can try to defer if you don't need the key item, but if, I think we want sometimes that <laughs> the fun fun thing about free enterprise is, yeah, you can actually turn in your rat tail and that becomes the pink tail, which then automatically gets turned in. So th sometimes that chain has happened before, and I enjoy that. I enjoy. Th uh, kind of the automated amusement of, of that. 
Yeah, definitely. Another couple things that we saw in that treasury that are worth noting too, um, we did find a dwarf axe for the cane. So cane is back row glitched, or at least will be on both sides almost surely. Plus a poison axe to get him going. And they, there's an ogre axe as well, should you be more on team ogre axe and want to spend some money. And also there's a life staff in there. And one of my favorite things I don't see a lot of runners do that is possible is you take that heroin robe and then you throw the life staff on whoever you threw that heroin robe on to counteract the penalty to healing and just benefit from the added agility. So that's something that might come into play later as well. Yeah, uh, having some something like that, or even the Stardust Rod, um, can't, you, it's it's a, it's a net gain of not it's a net gain or not even a loss. It's just neutral, which is all, sometimes that's all you need. You get most of the offensive benefits in terms of physical damage, but also not. Uh, hurting you when it when you need the magic i mean you some i mean you can go through a, a game just uh i mean it's one, it's one of the uh flags is sea naked so essentially you have no <laughs> no equipment outside of the starting weapon and that is so having having the heroin rope plus a step rod or staff certainly will keep keep your uh mages still uh, at least average and still and still can punch punch things as needed yeah plus an edge here on top of mount hobbs we don't really have the equipment for them but i think sort of going back to this treasury a little bit it's one of those treasuries that if you were to hit that treasury late in the game like hit that earth crystal when you've got seven other items that's that's a solid like six out of ten treasury but where you have all these items to get cane online get some of your other characters that you might get early on online as well you can throw that stardust rod even on tella if you want then that's going to be a real benefit towards getting you online and getting you through the early parts of the seed, which I find tend to be the most difficult parts of this flag set. Yeah, I think the edge, and for your nerd side, is uh, more valuable. I mean, I mean, you still need to get him a second, at least a second weapon, but um, the the edge will get you quick, quick get you there quicker. At Kane does need a, a kind of like Yang, he needs a bunch of levels at least. I mean, weapon, and certainly a weapon. The weapon is the more, more important one. Where, to, where right now, I don't think we have a suitable weapon. Dwarf axe is okay. It'll it'll be fine, and it'll be fine for anchoring purposes too. We don't. Uh, we can. I mean, early on in the overworld, an edge would probably be more useful. But, like, but the dwarf axe for the particularly for the agility manipulation. Is what you is what you uh, what you really want. So a slower slower anchor makes things easier for uh, any surprise boss that you don't uh, don't want to get get that quickly obliterated from. Yeah, definitely. We're not really seeing too much interesting coming out of this antlion cave. There's just another, I believe, another Stardust Rod. It was, and then. We did find a silk web in a chest on Beernard's side, so as long as Boney opened that chest as well, I did not notice if he did or not, then both of those will have that wonderful slow for Zeromus. Maybe can start skipping some of the item shops that they might otherwise be ducking into if they think that they've got enough to get through otherwise. I mean, with the early Tella, I think we were, we're still probably going to still try to look for a curse string. Just, just, just to solidify having the anchor. Probably end up being Telic. Might, might switch to someone else. Maybe a Fu, because he, because he has more spells, and we'll still, and we'll have more. Probably get more use out of a Fu. But for, for right now, just I think the sh occasional shopping and loot, certainly the looting, will be a lot more valuable. So we'll, we'll see what gets picked up and the rare. Uh, west side of Mount Ordeals. Uh, that usually doesn't get looked into, but since we have a source of exit, that will save some time, and any time saved now will impact decisions later. Yeah, that's kind of the story of this flag set to me, really, is it's very, your early choices will set the tone for the rest of the game, and a lot of our other flag sets we've had in tournaments are sort of down to choices that you make in the mid-game, choices you make towards the end game, and this is really much more of a marathon kind of thing, where you gotta get that pace going right at the start and maintain it throughout instead. I think a beer nerd's uh, trek onto Mount Ordeals makes sense. I mean, you have a Tella, you want to get that Tella 
Teleline with all his spells. I mean, that, that's why you have mage. He was mage with both white and black magic. The, you you do whatever it takes to get their spells online. In the case of Fu, you uh, you have to just kill more bosses. Every boss is um, is one step for more th three more spells learned by by Fu. In, in for Tal's case, completing Mount Ordeals, get him his base set of spells uh, with some missing black magic, but that's normal. It's uh, not not we all, all we care about is a. Uh, him as primarily a utility mage and utility mage for both black and white magic has still a lot of use definitely however it is going to be a bit of a rough time getting that tell online over on beer nerd side has found that alt gauntlet here at the top of mount ordeals thankfully both of our runners have that stardust rod in hand so neither of these fights the dark imps over in Fabul on bony's side the alt gauntlet on beer nerd side will pose too much of a problem it's just going to be a bit of a slow check on already kind of slow journey up a mountain over on beer nerd's end stardust is essentially uh just a free it's a free repeatable unneed to, you don't even have to sell it j item i mean this is it's it's a, it makes makes the overworld pretty free not so useful later on but you you just you, especially for an alt gauntlet it, just, it makes it kind of trivializes it and it's a free grind i don't think this will slowly get kane uh Kane the levels he needs. Uh, Edge uh, take a little bit longer, but Kane needs the levels, and that's kind of all. That's the biggest benefit here. Definitely, we are finding a dancing dagger over on Boney's side. Not really anyone who can use it quite yet. That least to its maximum efficiency. That's something you usually more want to see if you have like a Palom or a Rydia who you want to use that prop with when you don't have a Stardust Rod. But also, very interestingly, getting that package early on. And I think that if you're going to go commit to that for bull check right now, you probably got to check that package, right? I, th I think it depends on who what you get for the package. You may at least check to see what the character is. Uh, the the, the, the uh, issue with it is usually it blocks off uh, shop, essentially a shop axis. If you even kind of start that sequence you don't have access to capo shops and if they and we don't have the sand ruby objective which is which is fortunate but then we have to complete the we have to complete the remainder of the of the package and that can be a hassle so i i, I would i would see if it would be worth it if it's a cecil then i then it's certainly worth it for, uh, if right now i uh, it's a toss up at least maybe worth checking and oh surprise blarg this is Hope, hopefully we gets off the storm out and that should be good enough because uh wyvern will block itself on reflected and kane will survive oh yeah kane, oh, kane will survive oh just enough time that's that's surprising kane got got it off and <laughs> landed yeah that was the fastest jump i've ever seen in this game he's just like you know what we're gonna go quick today and the one time you don't want him to go quick is when there's a waiting wyvern about to just obliterate him if he lands and that is a bit unfortunate but is going to be through that fight very quickly and that's kind of one of the nicer places to see wyvern in a way because that fight can be pretty slow depending on who you get there so good on him getting through that we're going to see who what the key item is going to be from mount ordeals here very very soon yeah that's certainly what we're looking for uh the dan the dancing dagger uh oh decent cane weapon not top tier but but i think for for most of the seed you can probably you can probably live through a, a gun near that is, i mean it's not too far off from the best tier weapons and frankly you don't don't need things, something exciting just it works and you're happy with with the with the king who eblin uh well free well he's off the table and this is also usually a free spot for most bosses so that uh unfortunately off the table but yeah there'll be There'll be others. There's still there's still plenty of other bosses to that are that are not um, easy enough to take on with at, at, at stronger spots. It's unfortunate this the this uh, group off the table and uh, com also seeing a soma drop used on Tella pretty common since uh, I mean yes you get access to swag rocks and and everyone loves swag rocks but uh, I think the the increased MP pool is is crucial for a Tala or even a Fu, where you need the extra MP will get you 
one more nuke or what or one more cure for yeah, anything you can do to get that little bit extra out of that Tella. Um, it's going to depend a little bit whether or not they end up keeping that Tella long term. I feel like Tella's a bit not as favored during this tournament as he has been in other tournaments, mostly due to that uh, max four on the party. Just the first thing you tend to ditch seems to be utility there, and that's kind of led to a bit of a downfall. But Beer Nerd heading over here to Baron Inn, which we know now has a 50-50 shot at being our underground access. The only other place that we have access to at this point is the Earth Crystal. So this is either underground access, something that leads to it, or the other way around at this part in time. So it's going to be very important to see what we get facing this Mylon Sprite here at this Rosa. Well, he had brought friends, so we could, we have an edge. Uh, I guess we didn't we didn't want to go flame. Well, Stardust Rod is fine. It's a, this is a low HP spot too, so should be taken easily care of. Mylon might go through his uh, oh my body. Well, like, um, for I think there. I mean, I I think would probably be a I'm not. I don't the Zot check will probably be the next check either way. I'm not. I don't. I don't. I wouldn't. Wouldn't probably go underground even if it's the the magma key. The hook hook would be obviously preferable in it because we do but also uh, a little more dangerous we have to we have to take care of two bosses requ require two bosses on our way if we get the hook uh octo mammoth on this uh, not not too bad but a bit punchy but should should be more than enough even if tele takes a nap yeah definitely and thankfully this is one of those spots that doesn't uh, reward XP as well. So say if that cane goes down, you're not really losing out if he doesn't make it to the end of the fight. And this Optimam is pretty free for the most part with both of our uh, characters swinging away here. I think the only thing around that is going to be, you know, there is, of course, that school of thought when you get like a Magma Cure or something like that of always check your freebies first. And I think that might be the only reason why you would go underground there is, you know, I want to go get that free fame art spot. I want to get that. But there's a hook. This could get spicy fairly soon here. Sorry for willing it into existence. I mean, it could only be, it could actually be nothing. It could have been neither. So it's, but it happened. Just decide, the seed decided, hey, let's have a hook seed. Well, there's your hook. Uh, I think. We can probably want to turn the rat tail while we're while we're here. I mean, before we even maybe before we can consider Zod, how about we turn in the the rat tail? Maybe get a magma key hiked. That might maybe that will maybe might be able to escape uh doing the hook route. So it looks and looks like your nerd on the same wavelength. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, let's see. If, let's try to trade in the rat tail. Maybe we'll. Maybe we will get the pink tail and then automatically get the adamant, since uh, all pink tail trade-ins are always adamant, and that's and if we if we uh, fall into that, that'd be a good good sign, you know, things to come. Yeah, I think both of our runners are in pretty good shape right now. The only thing that is possibly concerning to me is whether or not they find a good anchor character for that hook route if they end up going down it. Because right now we don't have a curse string for that Tella. We have a Rosa who you don't really want to knock over. You want her getting experience so she can get to at least cure four by the end of the scene, if not, or end of the scene, end of the seed. But there's not a lot of great things. I think that Baron key from Rat Tail that we just saw on Beer Nerd's side is quite interesting though. Yeah, I think, I mean, the. The difficulty, I think Baron Key is a lot more intriguing. Yeah, we'll, uh, we're visiting Baron again after just visiting, but oh, no, nope, we're going to Zot. I guess it's that, it's that time. I, yeah, we're gonna, it's actually convenient in terms of the routing, as, as soon as you complete Zot, you land a Baron, and then you start doing the Baron Key, which it makes plenty of sense. Why Why do unnecessary routing if you if the routing already does the work for you? Definitely. I think this is going to be one of those things where it's trying to lead you down a certain path. And I think this is one of those good seeds to possibly just consider the do literally everything before you even consider going to the hook route kind of things, because we're in we're in good shape to clear most of the overworld. 
All we're really missing at this point in time is that twin heart to get through Cave Magnus and on Beerenrand's side, he hasn't gone with a bull yet, but we know that's just a package. So for the most part, you can be basically done with the overworld and then head to the hook route and only really be focused on underground checks and then only be focused on moon checks and not have to worry about going between maps constantly, which is always a nice little fringe benefit to me. Yeah, so I... Oh, flame... <laughs> Vanilla spot for flame dark chest. Oh, how quaint! It's nice. Um, yeah, I think what also um, for runners, if you like, if you're not, if you're kind of scared scared about the hook route, you can always do Evelyn Castle. Especially with this Tella, you can always try to gamble using stone to kill everything. And but if you, especially keeping them in the middle slot, which is in Beerner's case, a uh, ideal spot. You want the benefits of being in the middle slot for any character is. Um, you get you get to you get increased accuracy for both attacking and spells and spell accuracy for Tella pretty significant for certain for certain uh, spells particularly a weak common common spell you that used in uh, various grinding um, options uh, weak pretty much when when you when it hits a target it's um, great it. Cha essentially changes their HP to single digits and doesn't take much to uh, kill any target that has single digits so but a uh, stone in the, is a really powerful spell for um, killing enemies in groups so all, all you have to do is roll uh, just roll and if it succeeds everyone that can be afflicted with stone uh, goes away and, oh there's some more vanilla yeah, and I think as we're seeing Beer Nerd entering this Maga Sisters at Maga Sisters fight, that's kind of a good point about Evelyn Castle too, is going back to what we were saying earlier about how the decisions you make early kind of set the pace for the seed. I'm very much on team go to Evelyn Castle in this flag set because if you hit something in those early checks, it has so long into the seed to compound its effects. Like if you find a crystal sword and a Cecil, then you can just continue building on that lead if your opponent doesn't. I kind of feel like it's one of those things where you can't afford to not go to Eblin Castle in case your opponent goes there and finds something that's extremely useful. I mean, in this flag set, I think it's uh, lots, plenty of value. I mean, you can um, go, like, like say, before you even check uh, the free Ed Edward key item in Troya, um, you... The, just even just uh, checking each chest, figuring out where the the essentially where the trap chests are, and just looting it as quickly as possible. Um, that is certainly a viable option. I mean, there's also train other train of thought. It probably for later for uh, later down the road where it might behoove you to go uh, uh, clean it out late a little bit later, like loot later, so you can take on those uh, take on the monsters. And so basically, full loot that, full loot the castle, and um, so I think it de depending on how how you feel about Evelyn Castle, do you want to loot early or do you want to loot a little bit later? Or I, I either option uh, is a definitely intriguing proposition. Uh, what do you what which choice would you prefer? Yeah, it's. It's just really interesting how many different approaches you can have in this flag set. And it's one of those things where, you know, I know when I first looked at this flag set when it was released, I was a little bit not sure about how it would play out. But there is so much depth in the decision making early on that it actually is really, really interesting to see all of these really early decisions matter that much, which I don't want to make it seem like in other flag sets that didn't matter, but the emphasis on it is really fascinating to see here. Yeah. I mean, the, I mean, looting certainly is favored. Uh, not so much later, but not, and this, it's certainly a lot, you can get e practically every character filled out with some, with some piece and pieces of equipment and you should be reasonably online. I mean, this, where at, whereas later, later down, it, might you might not be you would be kind of more a little bit more disappointed in the kind of things you get uh Evelyn castle being um a late, a kind of a more difficult area in terms of uh mon in terms of the monsters uh makes the loot a lot more in, in a lot more interesting even even later down the road where and um oh was well 
uh, I guess we could at line for for that, but I don't I don't see the poor hum being picked up here. Maybe maybe as an anchor laid down the road, but uh, no, we have a, since we have a Rosa, and we're doing Zot, so exit not being a factor because we're completing Zot will give Rosa exit. And oh, oh, there's there's the other character we're probably not considering, at least not yet. Yeah, I kind of feel like even if you're planning on going adamant spoonward, you need to have the adamant in the spoon basically by the time you find Edward to really make it worthwhile, and that's just not a situation that's happening here. This is definitely a good flag set for letting Edward shine, but only if you find those pieces first. We're going to see who we get as the boss up here at the top of Zod if we're going to get another scoop of vanilla, but instead it looks like it's going to be Leviathan, which should be pretty easy for this team. Yeah, uh... I think the only the the only uh, da uh, dangerous part is uh, when Leviathan actually casts Ice Two uh, at the spot uh, Val the Val spot ha um, has a lot of uh, mostly spell power for accuracy. So yeah, that, this is twice as hard as it normally is, normally is for Leviathan. So yeah, but so I th actually. Think if we get yeah, kept the definitely using going with the flex strat is safe, uh, pro, but that will also restrict a healing as your limit. Your you have to use potions to survive the damage. You have as um, trying to heal will be reflected, and you don't want to reflect healing back to Leviathan. Yeah, and to quickly answer your question from chat, saying C by is an on, so couldn't you go grab an Eddie after you find an Adam and armor and spoon? And yes, that's definitely an option. But because we only have the max four, uh, the four-person parties, that means that the uh, slingshot does not happen in these flags. And you would not necessarily be able to level him as quickly. And you still need enough levels to get him the HP pool to survive on his aromas fight to really get the most usage out of him. So it kind of becomes a thing where you want to find him early when you have those two parts and then you can really use him otherwise you're kind of ending up in a situation where you have an edward that has no health and he just gets knocked over still well like that uh, that was an interesting second star valve but it doesn't matter because leviathan killed himself with his own magic that's good enough you survived get save 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 it for another day a problem probably be worth trying to look for some star veils after that the starting kit i think only gives you a pair so that usually is good enough for uh wyvern we've already seen and and uh, occasionally a najura but certain usually you want to keep it around for golbez and wyvern the two top two top bosses that you want to take advantage with reflect I completely missed that item text box off of Baron Castle here real quick, off of that Zot check, but I think it's not going to matter in this case. It was it was nothing. That's deeply unfortunate. We are going to see uh, Beer Nerd head straight into this Baron Castle check, which I, I'm pretty sure uh, Boney will do as well. These runners are very neck and neck right now. I would say that while it may look like Beer Nerd has a very slight advantage at the moment, probably is Boney that has a slight advantage because he has gotten through that Fabul check that Beer Nerd is not yet done. And I kind of expect that Beer Nerd will pick the Fabul check over going down the hook route immediately. So we'll see how that shakes out in a little bit here. Yeah, I think, I mean, if I mean, you know you have the hook but you ha and you're hoping that the Magma Key will bail you out, I mean, that's what's going to happen. And given what we know right now, uh, that check well, um, what happened? Unless you, unless you're like, he's like, hey, we know we have the hook. We guaranteed underground access, so we will come back later. Some like a lot of, often time, not not as often as you think, but just often enough that uh, the try. We some people try, fade for bull early because they don't want to essentially effectively worst case triple dip for bull. Like just do the boss, do Sheila one, and then do Sheila two, and you don't. A lot of people, a lot, try to fade for bull try to avoid that check. But sometimes the the key item you actually need is that for bull. So it's I, I personally I would probably I would still try I would still do the 
but we will check first. But you know, this so it's it's a choice, and right now it's not it won't won't hurt beer nerd. So if if you if you do that fade and fade fade that hard at least early on, then I I respect that decision. Yeah, it's it's really interesting here at this point in time where our runners are going to go. I don't think Boney, as uh, sort of is getting pointed out in chat here, uh, actually has turned in that rat tail yet, which means he doesn't have that Baron key. So it'll be interesting to see where he goes. Yeah, he's going to have to go ahead and do that before he does anything else. And that's going to he's going to feel a bit bad about that, I think, in just a moment when he realizes that he has to go straight back to Baron and fight, as we're seeing over on Beer Nerd's side, good Queen Demist here on the throne. Uh, well, I'm um, Demist very tanky. Uh, pro shouldn't, it, it shouldn't be trouble. It just, it just takes some time. Uh, Demist being a... Uh, not an act, not actual dragon in terms of, it's not not said to be even though it is a dragon we see it look has wings it's a dragon but uh <laughs> the demist uh phase demist is a uh, pretanky primarily in due part uh there's a phase where it just turns into mist you can't do any damage to it but it can't won't do any damage to you fortunately so you're able to heal up and because of that uh it, it that's what it what draws out the fight if, especially if you don't do enough damage and the also the other thing about it is that demist is a holy dragon and resists holy uh uh El darkness weapons still actually affect affect them it's just actually neutral uh, compared to uh equipment though um a dark if you, and there's no there's no uh weapon or piece of equipment that sets a uh, holy resistance but there is a darkness holy resistance thing going on in the game but was not set for whatever reason and but bosses independently will can set up you know weaknesses and fortunately Brunner takes care of takes care and we'll see what's in the pot and the character we get yep meanwhile over on Boney's side making an interesting choice to head over to Eblin Cave instead of heading back to Baron we are going to see a Cecil pick up on Beer Nerd's side, but back over on Boney's side, we found a Cursed Ring here in the Eblin Shops. We found Bacchus Wines here in the Eblin Shops. Both of those are going to be very, very important for any team that they're looking at setting up at this point, where you have a Kane, an Edge, and in Beer Nerd's case, a Cecil. So that's a very, very good thing to find, as well as an Assassin Dagger, too, so you want to use that to get through some of those... Uh, various trap chests and like that and possibly eggs when you find sirens when you're underground and need a little bit of a boost yeah assassin is an interesting weapon uh the one of the things does it yes it oh there's the magma key hook route optional but boney does not know that uh it's uh so um one of the um the assassin has two factors it's so one it, it boosts your attack your strength and agility which is good good important for increasing your uh overall uh damage but it also comes with like low accuracy i think the accuracy is 50 percent. so uh, for edge uh the his accuracy is dictated by the uh either the weapon on the sole weapon that he has on or the average of the two weapons that he has equipped so the and that over uh reduces overall damage you do get the, the benefit of inflict have chance to inflicting uh instant death so which can be valuable in certain situations it looks like bunny has seen that there is an asura over there on the hook route with a palum choosing not to take the palum however beer nerd getting the real big hit here over on the uh over from that Baron Castle check, finding the magma key from that uh, Baron Castle. So Boney will hopefully go back to that afterwards. And if not, that's going to be a little bit of a uh, time setting thing here. Uh, it does look like Boney is just going to do some looting here, looking for that trap chest, looking to see what he can get out of it. And Beer Nerd going to see what he can find here and then probably back out right afterwards and head underground, I'd imagine. And no, no one has gone to Eblin Castle yet, as was just mentioned on ch in chat. I think there might be a character check to go to boot. We like you, this. You, since the this is considered a gated check, character check, uh, Cecil and Fu being part of that list, uh, we maybe if if there's a Fu here, it'd be worth the time to 
to just at least verify. If it's not there, um, we'll we'll exit anyways and go on our merry way. At least in in Beer Nerd's case, uh, this will, we have the magma key, so we're we're skipping and see what the boss is. Just you know, keep keep in the back of our minds, or you know, uh, if 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 there's a tracker um, manually, just check him check him off as a boss you don't have to deal with. And whatever the and whatever the King Queen Ebla spot, but we don't know what we probably will find out on Boney's side what the King Queen Eblin uh, boss is. For now, uh, Beardner does not have to worry about that. Yeah, I think it depends on what Boney decides to do. He might just be going for loot at this point, trying to get all those chests cleared out here in Cave Eblin. It seems a little bit like he's going for that, and I'm hoping that he sort of uncommits from this and heads back into Baron Castle. But, you know, it's one of those things where sometimes you gotta take risks in order to get ahead. And taking this hook route without checking Baron Castle would be an interesting risk, and it's sort of looking like he is heading down that hook route now. I, th I think given that we, we're not required to do to liberate Baron, it's probably... Like, it, like, usually if that objective was there, then I would then there would be more incentive to do that. And we know that doing Baron, even though it's an option, not a required check, but very uh, special time... Uh, itself just doing the baron check itself is time consuming but the benefit is getting magma you know it changes the equation it's just, that's only if you knew you, you, but you, like you, but some sometimes some factors like hey i uh, maybe i don't like the characters so i'll see i'll do the character check while we're there you know there, that's some, something like that would change a, a runner's thinking you know, do i need do i need a replacement characters and i think with the party what we have that we see i think Usually it's good enough. Uh, maybe try to replace the cane if you could, which uh, Beerner did. So, you know, I think that the like sometimes the the math changes. Like, do I, am I happy with my party? Will I live? And with this flex, with with uh, what we've seen, um, you could you could you could go either way, really. Yeah, definitely. And we are going to see Beernerd head here to Dwarf Castle instead of heading over to sort of quote-unquote free checks first. I think that's going to be one of those things where, sort of going back to what I was saying, you know, on Boney's side, it is one of those risks that you take when you leave a check open on the overworld, when you have a hook route possibly on the table, that it will be exactly magma key. And it's one of those things where it's easy from like a viewing perspective to say, oh, he made the wrong choice. Cause in the case of the seed, yeah, it is turning out to be the wrong one, but it's definitely a good risk because you know, it is what are the chances of that exact one spot being the magma key. And I kind of like this play isolated from what we already know about the seed. So I think that's probably where he is at right now. Like, I mean, the, I mean, the flag set kind of endor kind of endorses completionism i mean but, i mean time ideally you want to save some time by not completing things but i think given the key items that you've gotten up to this point you probably want to do more completionism if if there were if there was like a vast uh not enough key items that like you'd have ver like uh like say four key items instead of like what we have like six or so night right at this point we would you'd be thinking uh there probably be more stuff on the moon, you know. Like, like sometimes, key, at least for me, key items—the number of key items you've obtained—guides you to where do you think the key, where do the key items uh, are located? And when they're when they're less on the on the overworld, and uh, you might, you're hoping that more of them are in the underground. But if if you know if you're not getting any key items, they're probably going to be more likely on the moon. You just got and and it's just I guess some running enough seeds or just intuition you might you would your your thinking is gonna kind of just dis, will change based on you know what you've gotten you know characters key items those things will drive what uh how rudders uh, approach what they do next definitely bony has managed to find a masmune from that mad ogre chest at very least in this hook route so that will be a nice little bonus for that edge Beernerd looking like he's going to head down Sealed Cave, just get that third objective cleared out right now, because that's really the only objective that's on the table at the moment that you can do 
at this very moment. We're still looking for that uh, Twin Heart for Cave Magnus, still looking for a Darkness Crystal for the White Spear Altar, still looking for the Tower Key, and still looking for the Pink Tail. So at this point in time, you might as well go for those objectives. And there is a King not so here at the King and Queen spot. That is not really what you want to see here. Well, the spot punches hard, but a, a given and probably, um, but the HP is not too bad. So I'm probably not so concerned as long as we can do some decent damage, lower the resulting damage from wave as wave is an HP based spell of the caster. So less the the more hp the boss has the more damage that's going to be dealt and didn't quite get off quit the uh, lightning off early enough to avoid the wave but that's okay it's not this is not too bad and we've already gotten gotten uh kinazo into shell phase uh Bjornard's inter choice of going to a uh, sealed cave is a little interesting I under and certainly you can uh, you can a uh, common thing to do here is to save scum if whatever you find there is not an objective not a key item then oh we have to complete it this isn't this is interesting i'm not sure the power level is enough but we'll see we'll see what the boss is to determine that i would i would like for, for me i would think of the maybe deferring the see the key item in uh land of summon monsters that and before coming here and then you know if you if you don't get what you, don't look, if you don't like what you got in the uh, land of summon monsters you just then coming here wouldn't be too wouldn't be too bad but i think uh, like i will let the key items try to guide me a little bit this, but this is a required objective so we'll see what turns up and what turns up is odin which uh i don't not i'm a little i yeah i'm now concer really concerned about the dps i don't think this this is might end up to be a reset it's definitely an interesting boss to have here i was about to note that there's not too many bosses that are all that concerning here and then odin is one of them that you were concerning i was like oh well, the kainato is off the table we know that's on the hook route i hope it's not an odin or something like that and apparently that has uh gone through the screen here and it does look like Bernard is going to take a reset and uh it looks like he's going to end up possibly going back out no nope, going to tent and maybe take another try here i'm thinking that um i think we're going to try to get tella to use lightning three as uh as oh that's essentially odin's weakness lightning uh he's extra weak so it looks like we're going to go that way and Unfortunately, since Bjornar did not do um, did not do the hook route, doesn't so Edge does not have access to the Blitz spell, which would be really helpful. But I think we have, might have enough J items to. But I kind of kind of. I mean, I'm probably at the edge of my seat trying to find. Wonder uh, is that is that going to be it? But a Bony completed completed Azure and on on his way to the underground. Let's yeah. Get Extremely good execution from Boney there. Not really going to take that much of a hit from going down this hook route versus the Magma Key. And, you know, I think that execution is really important to note because both of these runners, you know, they're in the Zeus Gauntlet group. And out of the groups that we have in this tournament, Zeus Gauntlet is probably one of my two picks for the sort of group of doom, so to speak. You know, you have many good runners in there. You have Luf, you have Demarine, you have poorly drawn bees, you have stoppable force, and you have just kind of all of them are runners that I'm pretty, pretty high in respect for as actual runners. And so seeing that level of execution, you're like, okay, so this is still a very difficult group because these two are also going to be posing a threat in there. So this is an important match from that perspective too. Yeah. I mean, every, I mean, everyone's skilled. I'm Certainly, there'll be different levels of skill on display, but that, but they're putting on a show for us. So I mean, it's a it's it's a good thing for everyone involved. And uh, yeah, that oh well, well, that that Odin was taken care of. That that's a taking care of the objective early is a certainly a good thing. Yep, and we are seeing Boney also picking up the Hourglass twos out of that uh, Tomra shop. We did not really have a moment to note that, but that's a pretty good pickup if you find, say, dolls later or either of the sets of Baron guards which we haven't seen yet. Or if you decide, hey, I got a couple sirens, I want to get some levels, I'm going to go take care of some gold dragons at the bottom of uh, the bottom of cave value. That's all in there. 
Birner definitely did a very good job of thinking his way around that fight, and that's definitely a benefit. I'm not entirely sure who I would say is in the lead at this point, though, because while Birner might have that objective done, he's going to end up having to go through that uh, Baron ch or that uh, Fabul check once he gets back above ground, almost certainly at some point in time. And honestly, Boney is just not that far behind. This is some really, really interesting routing from both sides right now. So, just, just thinking about it a little bit, um, so yeah, Bjornard did do the Baron check, uh, and getting access to whatever, to, I mean, you get, you get them, uh, at least access to, um, to, un you get access to, uh, the Odin, Odin, uh, Odin spot, which might contain a key item, so it, that's, I think, in some ways, I, I, just, I almost thought it was the opposite, where I thought, the other <laughs> one did th one did the other thing but having uh having uh baron on um, not being required but also an accelerant to getting underground might be time saved because if there's a key item required let's say darkness crystal on the odin spot beer nerd's actually ahead but if if there is actually nothing then beer nerd might have spent the uh, yes, the time spent go getting uh, going through Baron to get the magma key might be. But if you if he if he completes uh, Odin and gets nothing out of it, oh, favorite favorite people, ha ha ha. And I think quarter leg or no, that was not was that quarter leg or Ruby? I don't. Impossible to say until we actually have the check on that. So that is going to be uh, probably not taken right away. Yep, just gonna exit out from this underground, so come back to that later. Only getting the Legend Sword for down there, which just... I feel like if Legend Sword is not an objective, you're really only looking for the Excalibur in this case, and there's always a chance you'll find a better sword or an Excalibur elsewhere. So it's hard to say at the moment. Uh, just gonna go down and set up Shield 1, though, instead. Yeah, uh... There, I mean, there's... There's a thought to, I mean, the worst case is the pen is literally at Sheila one, in which case they will be back here again. Uh, in a, hoping that maybe if, unless darkness is at Sheila one, which in which case this is a this is a brilliant move. But what depends on what, what is received on the other end could could be neither. It doesn't. It, so, um, looks like Boney t is taking the taking the dwarf one route. So that's it interesting decision we'll see what the other boss it was the other well, the other boss was uh was it antline yes it was yes. antline so we should this shouldn't be bad we'll see what the character is on this side and looks and once we find out it's hope, hoping it's hoping well maybe it's a foo let's see let's will it to existence uh, it's a foo if we willed it it happened i'm sorry but that's so a that's an I easy think, decision. I, I think this was the right play, just on the basis of finding a food to replace that Tala with at this point, especially if that Fu happens to have a nuke already, which she will after this fight, guaranteed 100%. So uh, yeah, you were, uh, you're going to get a real big power spike from getting that Fu, and that could be another thing that sort of swings things a bit more in Boney's favor. Because again, you, you're looking for compounding results on whatever you get early on in the seed, and Fu is definitely good for that. Just uh, on the other on the other side of things, you like you have to think that the, if you do the hook route, the experience comes from just the ruby spot. Whereas Baron, the XP isn't as great. I mean, you have you, I mean, there's the Bygun spot and the Kainazo spot minimum required to com just to com to free Baron, so to to provide access to the uh, Odin spot. So Bodhi might have a little bit more experience just just on the value of doing the hook route. Not saying. It was required. It's just, you know, the differences in experience gained can can be impactful early on. Where especially, and Fu is practically online with the almost full HP, which now uh, after completing that series of bosses, uh, uh, he's completely online with Nuke, and out uh, with up uh, Dwarf required for the darkness. Seed, so double bonus, you get the Fu and the key item to get on the moon to for at least one required objective. And I think that's the thing, too, is that at the moment, you know, Beernerd might have more checks in the bag, and but 
that darkness crystal changes things a lot. And if you're not, if that Odin spot in Baron Castle is not ending up being worthwhile, then it's not gonna matter too much what uh, Boney gets from that. However, we are getting a good sword out of Sheila One, so that will mitigate some of the foo over on Boney's side, because now he can just have a Cecil swinging an Excalibur. That'll take care of that. But uh, here's the question. If you're on Boney's side, when do you go to the moon? I think we want to do more completionist, just completing the stuff on the underground, even just doing Sheila one is but i, I mean we because we we don't we don't know it's what uh i don't remember what what sheila one gave but you kind of want to complete as much as possible even do a towerless one before going to the moon i mean this you I, seeing as a lot of the key items were laid out early on i think just completing doing much as you can on the overworld before going to the moon because there's only one required on the moon and that's on the white spear altar uh, probably, um, I, I'm, I'm more, I'm, I'm leaning towards the, just co do more completion stuff on the, on the earth first. Um, maybe, and right now it looks like, uh, peak, we're getting at the, the free item, ch key item check and the boss peak. And we know it's Golbus on the king side and I don't remember what's on the queen side. Uh, it's not, but not any more fun. On the queen side was some unknown quantity of leg. Uh, so yeah, that's a uh, ruby. Yeah, some leg. Yeah, who wants? Yeah, I think. Although at this point, uh, we do. I'm not sure we have ac uh, access to uh, any of the. Do we have a, even an ice brand or blizzard? I don't think we. I don't think we found any because that was. Then it would probably be not so bad. But uh, the the queen spot has a lot of uh, magic power, so the counter fire too will uh, be a bit painful. So this is probably, but we have a foo. We could probably just you know just nuke him to death. Actually, yeah, it might be more doable in Boney. In fact, at this point. Yeah, I was about to say until he hit exit that I wouldn't be surprised if Boney actually goes for it, because first of all, he's been taking risks throughout this seed already. You know, he went for that uh, dwarf castle that. I think there's a sort of wisdom of maybe don't do Dwarf Castle right then, which I don't necessarily agree with, but he went for it and paid off with the Foo, paid off with the Darkness Crystal. He's going to go up to the moon now and at very least check the character from that, maybe looking for that Cecil. I wouldn't have been surprised if he went for it, and he definitely is set up for it, as he could just reflect Nuke onto that Mylon if it's elements and just not even worry about that Ruby phase at all. I mean... Yeah, the gold is all you need is the star veil. So, as, as far as you're concerned, you just just need a star veil and let him let him kill Golbez, uh kill himself with reflected spells. But uh, yeah, I would, I I would, I I mean, Boney's case far more favor favors that. I think maybe I mean if you do dwarf early, it's because more likely than not you don't like the characters you have in your hoping for a good character and we know that it's foo and so it's certainly worth worth the time to do it in beer nerd taking advantage of that replacing the tella because foo is a uh, lunar and tella ultimately right i mean or or really just the mop because uh he he has a lot of hair it could be i mean he could he cleans up seeds very well Exactly. You know, someone's got to keep these crystal floors polished here, and that is what a foo is good for. Um, you know, he just walks past, and everything is just nice and clean afterwards. We are going to see nothing good in this Hummingway shop today. We know the sirens are down in Fay March. We know that there's hourglasses in Tomra. There's not, we know the Bacchus wine is on the hook route. So there wasn't really anything in that that could be in that Hummingway shop that's like, wow, that's in the Hummingway shop today. But it's always good to check that sort of thing. He's going to go in and check this character now, though. I don't think we've gotten a dupe character yet. We haven't seen a dupe character yet. I mean, I think we've seen practically everyone. Uh, we have found a... T I mean, we found a oh, Tella that is yeeted, uh, and the characters on Zot, I think it was like a... Was a Bard and a Porum. So I think this is to be the dupe, if I'm not mistaken. 
I believe we're missing a Sid and a Yong at this point. So both of those still unknown quantities to be found somewhere. Yeah, but we're at least we're we're not we're not gonna plan on getting the character the giant character. Let's just let's let's get it out there. We're not whoever's in the giant, uh you're you're gonna be stuck there for a bit. That's not happening. You know, and especially giant is not uh one of the required uh, objectives, so yeah, or they'll be alone in the giant, and yeah, we have we'll immediately eat the yang we've just found on the moon. Yeah, there's there's worlds where yang is great, and I think here's here's my hot take of the day. I think that yang is probably a good candidate for one of the least useful characters in this flag set just because you're so likely to get gear for other characters and really at that point in time what are you going to use the yang for if you're already power overwhelming he sort of strikes me as one of those characters that's just baseline good but not ever approaching great so i don't think there was really a world in which you were going to go for that but speaking of risks that boney is taking he's heading underground into the subterrain, it looks like he's going to start on moon checks right away. I mean, you're here. You have a you have a foo. You're probably pr you're going to be pretty confident. I mean, foo will solve everything. And I guess we're doing a grind for everyone else, not named foo primarily. So yeah, this I, since foo has all the spells, uh, we're just going to just take advantage of weak and also the life glitch, which most likely we'll see. Um, so what happened? So thing about the uh, Life glitch. Uh, hoping this is going to be demonstrated. Looks like it is. So when you can target a life potion before the enemy uh, expires, once the enemy dies, life potion is used. And what happens is uh, life life potion. All it cares about is uh, the vitality of the character. But since monsters don't have any vitality, vitality means it's zero. And zero times anything because it. It normally multiplies vitality times five, but zero times anything is still zero. So, that so the enemy so the enemy kind of revives at zero HP, which means it's dead, and this is counted as a as another kill. So, so instead of having two having killed two uh, King Ryu's, it's counted as having killed three, and that's a, that's a good thing. Yeah, that's kind of I think that's gonna come. Be the next big, uh, next big uh, decision point here. When do you stop grinding with this party? Because honestly, after these King Ryu's, once I've gotten that cane and edge up to a little bit more HP, maybe gotten rows of like Cure Three at least, I would be pretty tempted to say, "All right, that's enough grinding for me today. I'm gonna get the rest of my levels from doing these Moon bosses." I think that's gonna be the big question here. When do you stop? Well, you have to at least have cure three. I think it's it, for if you want to be safe, get cure four, and then whatever's left will get will get you there. It looks like Pure Nerd is going for the for the trap chest route, which is a, which is an interesting decision. It's completely well, like instead of if you we've never didn't haven't found the, the sirens. I don't remember if they were viable or where they were found, but if in the case of that, you you could just gamble for a trap chest, and especially given that the dungeon. The dungeon we're in that means the loot is at its best even if it's not a trap chest so this is this will should net you some decent gear other way and the xp which is the primary goal but the the loot is a bonus and that's and that's what we're looking for fortunately uh the carries have max near max magic defense which is why that quake did not do do anything or speaking of Quake has a spell power of 200, uh, mac near max magic defense. So these little certain group of enemies ha are in that category, which is at 254. The max is 255, and when you have 255, uh, which is generally applied to uh, Val when she spins, but uh, even but you can in some in some senses can get them to 255 with the shell spell, not which is not enabled that causes the, the monster to become magically immune. That's no magic can be cast on. It's magic, invincible to magic. Hey, hey, this is, this is what we're here for, the adamant. I think I like this trap chest play. 
And I think I like it a lot more now that we just found Adam and Armor for that Cecil swinging the Excalibur. That is a huge bonus. I think when you've hit Adamant Excalibur Cecil plus a foo, you probably don't even need the grind at that point in time. Just take the levels you're gonna get from the encounters and go. And I think if Beerner chooses to go that path, he is completely free to do so now. Yeah, Adamant for, for most runners should be stop looting, you're done, let's go. Especially when now we have we have the foo, yeah, and the Cecil. I think I th I I think Edge's equipment is probably good enough. If the Massa and the Ninja Sword is usually more than enough, but it looks like we're just gonna do more because we need the XP, I think, and that's okay. It's fine. Uh, we'll, we won't worry about it because Cecil will live. Everyone can die. I think that's okay. We, uh, Edge is not the it's not the focus since uh, we have at least close enough. I mean, Excal is good enough burr for for um, most for most runners. I'm just, I'm thinking about a race I was on for commentary a while ago. I think it was a community race, and I think it was Invenerable, who found an adamant armor in a shop, started selling everything he had equipped to, like, every other character just to get, like, Crystal Sword, Adamant, Cecil online, and then just Cecil and Rosa was the only thing that mattered for the rest of that seed, just getting through that way. And I think that if you are willing to sort of go that far, you can just leverage that Cecil into everything. But there's always some safety in going this route. I think that's definitely a valid strategy over on Beer Nerd's side. Yeah, I mean, with Beer Nerd having the Cecil from from Baron, probably the more important pickup than the, the Magma Key at this point in time. Uh, I think the, the Cecil will make more of a difference than Kane. Uh, Kane's weapons, um, uh, we and we, since we don't have the Super Smith enabled, uh, Kane doesn't. Uh, yeah, we give you. We ha you have another XL. Have another. That's yeah, that's that's what the game is telling us. So yeah. Um, so right now, uh, I would argue Beer is pretty much ahead. Not just objectives, but you have the you have the lot more power to just to steamroll the seed. Boney still will be more than fine, but I think the Cecil is right now the difference when, we, when it comes down to it. And that just goes back to what we've been saying since the start of this, you know, this flag set is again about the advantages you can create from your early decision making. And Beer Nerd's advantages have paid off very well. I think we're about to see boss checks on both sides, so I gotta imagine that both of our runners are gonna go to that White Spare Altar first. That's the uh, fourth objective today. Yeah, I, I mean, we have we need a lot, bunch of key items, so I think w after we do this, uh, wonderful, I'll go at this spot. Yeah. We're gonna do a full full clear, ultimately. The, the, I mean, especially with the Ribbon Room, with the two key items right next door, uh, yeah, why, you're, you're there, why not? We we need what at least uh three key items so the harp the tower key and the pink tail is is the primary things that are still required left that we that that, that will enable them to go into go mode so this is this is just on, so here is a trip to clean up clean up the moon and hopefully hope hope that the rest every the moon is not haunted but uh, fill to the brim with all the key items you totally need in the seed. It is a very interesting situation too, as you know, let's say that for the purposes of just a theoretical here, that you find a twin heart from this white spear altar, you go next door, you find the tower key, you find the pink tail, do you just bail, or do you maybe hold out for a pass and a few more levels? I think you probably just bail at that point. So I think there is a world in which, you know, if you make the exact right decision and the key items lay out in exactly the right way, you maybe don't full clear this moon, but I think it's super unlikely. I mean, if you get the key items, you're just you're just going for it. It's done. It's a done deal. Um, pass. Uh, I don't. What pass? Uh, I don't need a pass. Uh, I, I, I'm going, going from the front door. No, no, no back door pass for me. I mean, if that's and it can't happen that way. I mean, sometimes you find the key item earlier, and then it it, it makes you miss a, a diff, the pass. And sometimes 
and that hap that has happened in seeds of I've, I've watched it, it's it happens it's just sometimes the, so like as I said before the order in which you do things will det will determine and sometimes you will find the path on your way sometimes you won't because you found something that will that kind of changed your immediately changed your routing decision well, we just got an answer to how much leg is uh, the queen of Fey March today. It is full leg as it is the Rubicant down there at that queen spot. We're finding elements here in the ribbon room, which is, uh, you know, it's a time. This shouldn't be too difficult, but also nothing should really be too difficult for, I think, either runner at this point. You know, obviously Bernard is going to get through these fights a little bit faster with that adamant Excal Cecil, but... Boney is not necessarily taking a long time in these fights as much as she's just taking longer, which, you know, does make a difference, but it's definitely still anyone's game right now. So what, the one thing about Elements fight, uh, which um, kind of, it is something worth of noting, is that the that any Holy Sword isn't actually as effective for the first three forms. I would, there, are like, there are two actual physical bosses, but there are four elements um the first three forms are um, are resist are essentially absorb holy it, but when you're using a weapon with it uh it just means redu uh, it's just a resistance to holy so you're doing half damage so for most of the fight cecil and the holy sword uh kind of isn't at full power and once once you see when she got the val phase it's pretty over because then cecil becomes power overwhelming and holy Oh, here's more adamant for you and more uh, darts. Yeah, good. You want an adamant Cecil starter kit in your ribbon room as well? Just that way you can have another Excal and adamant sitting here. He's going to have an adamant sitting on that edge too. Edge is going to be taking care of that. We're going to get a third adamant over on Beer Nerd's side when he gets that pink tail that he has to turn in for that final objective. So. Yeah, I think he's in very good shape. I think at this point in time, he might even be in a position where it's like, you know what? Let's fast anchor and see how quick we can go against this Z fight once we get later. And maybe don't even bother, you know, cursing the Fu or whatever his initial plan was. Probably don't really need to curse Fu when you have enough adamants to go around that. Half the team has adamants for Beer Nerd, and that's. And, and you're going to have to turn in, turn in the pink tail, which means they're. You mean, I mean. If we end up with a quad arm, quad adamant armor uh, party, I mean, the ga the game is at your the game is at your mercy, really. Z is Z is not too long for this world. Once once you have quad, when you have what you have, all the adamants you ever needed. Absolutely, and I think it's also one of those things too where it may seem like you know, it benefits both runners equally, but finding these adamants at these locations is actually going to benefit Boney a lot more than it will benefit Beer Nerd. I don't want to say that you have, like, diminishing returns per adamant, because it's not entirely correct, but the second adamant armor matters a lot less than the first, and the third adamant armor matters less than the second, and so on. So this is really kind of giving Boney ways of getting back in a little bit by gaining speed and we'll see how different these Pale Dim fights ends up being, because that time gap is going to start closing in how fast they can actually get through these fights. So that was an interesting swap. From uh, from Boney uh, swapped out the Ice Claw. Uh, one of the things about Pale Dim that uh, you don't notice until you've casted magic on it, on it is that uh, it absorbs all of the base three elemental fire, ice and lightning. So if... If that edge still kept that ice claw, he would be doing half damage, and no one wants to be doing half damage to uh, any any boss. And hey, required key item for objective. Still, we'll still need to go to Wyvern spot, the Crystal Sword altar, and uh, Murazim altar to clean to finish out the lunar subterrain. Absolutely, and we're going to see where Bernard goes from here. Probably going to go to that Crystal Sword altar next and then head on up to the final altar afterwards. Now is a very good time while he's sort of walking up and Boney C is finishing off this Hail Dem fight to give a shout out to both of our runners and, uh, you know, make sure that you are giving them both a follow. 
And as also a good time to shout out our Restream team behind the scenes as well, Dishmu for rolling this wonderful and very high powered seed and Judge Joe doing the tracking behind the scenes. Make sure you give them as well as my co-commentator Deathlike today a follow as well. Yeah, because uh, I can't pushing buttons. Uh, it's it's it can be a hard job. I can't. I mean, figuring <laughs> figuring how, especially on a on a reset. You know, sometimes you didn't like the the outcome comes with a lot more cost. As sometimes when the the last time you save is not when you think it saved, and you might lose quite a bit of progress. And keeping track of all that, uh, I. I have not that high attention span, so I can't remember everything that that quickly. And this is oh, this is going to be a slow spot CPU. At any at any any time you find it, uh, not always a slow fight. The damage is not a cons not usually a concern. It's trying to get at the back row and and try to DPS the CPU. Usually sped up with throwing things at it because you know machines like you to smash it. It, it, it works better. Yeah, I find that generally, you know, if you're ever having PC options, um, while it may not be great tech support, I do think that hurling an Excalibur into it does have a slight chance of fixing the problems and should always be on the table. And to quickly answer a question from chat, how many objectives are required for Go? All of them. For this seed, you need seven out of seven objectives in order to get that crystal to go to this Aromas fight, so... This flag set is built around high completion, and we're probably going to see that today here because we still have not seen that twin heart, and we still have not yet seen that pink tail. Yeah, so so if you see seventeen out of seventeen uh, uh, things light up, uh, it's because yeah, that's that's the way the seed might have rolled out. Well, hey, we so you threw the X Cal. How about something else, some, a better thing to throw? Yeah, it's. So now we're gonna exit and then just walk back in because that's usually that's the quickest way. It uh, mo ho most uh, you try to exit out of the lunar subterranean with the spell because uh, walking out is kind of a miserable moment. We even warp. There's a lot of floors you go through and warp. Usually doesn't doesn't not that much better, but at least it's something. Yeah, definitely. It's such a long walk, too, and that's kind of where, at this point in time, if I'm Beer Nerd or Bony C and I see something that's not giving me go mode, I'm like, please give me that pass. I don't want to walk down this entire subterrain again. I just got done with that. And to answer another question from chat as well, why is everyone on four characters? Actually, the, this flag set has the C max party at four. And that's kind of one of the things in this flag set designed to mitigate having so much power at your disposal is you have to be a little bit more thoughtful in how you're assembling a party around it. So it's one of those interesting wrinkles that we haven't really run in a tournament that much before. But when you get to it, you know, it's not as not as hard as it seems in this particular case. We are going to see this mom bomb here at this altar. Not a problem. When you think of Mom Bomb, you kind of think this is a really rough boss to find in the mid game, and this is the end game. So this should fall pretty quickly. Yeah, I'm not in the spot. You with the the normal spot is pale dim, and uh, it this kind of is relatively balanced. The punches, don't, it's it's okay. I'm not not really concerned, especially with 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 essentially your grunt is the moon, and yeah, that's. Shouldn't be taking, shouldn't be too long. Once we get into uh, exploding phase, uh, which we'll hope to nuke it out. We didn't, didn't even get to that. For that. Didn't even need to show up. It did too much damage. It's power overwhelming. Uh, as for the the uh, for Kane, that would that would actually be good for Bony, but not so much Beer. So once Bony does his does um, checks the the Mer altar, then hit. Kane will be a bit happier with that. Um, with, with that said, uh, the Cecil question. So, Cecil of all the characters, uh, um, his his peak really just it's even with the Excal Crystal Sword is just is icing on the cake for sure. But and when you you ha you don't even need that many levels to get Cecil online when you have the Excal or even the Crystal Sword available. The the like unlike other unlike most fighters. You, you, 
his his weapons pretty much get get him there much quicker. Whereas everyone else needs levels. They also need equipment. Uh, Edge, for instance, you need a pair of decent blades to to actually get him doing a decent a bit of damage. And Kane, while well, prob probably one of the better ones uh, for like, Boney and Boney still using him. Um, his his weapons kind of uh, limit him. I mean, he's depend the 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 game is dependent on him to use jump, which doubles his damage, but also means that his weapons don't don't exude the same kind of p power level as a crystal Excal, which is why they are already they they are by default set up to be tier eight weapons. Yeah, definitely. But meanwhile, over on Beer Nerd's side, we're about to, we just saw another advantage of finding that Cecil in Baron Castle. Beer Nerd finding Karate in Cave Value. And Karate as a boss is very, very interesting. Once he's queued up his second kick, one attack from Cecil causes him to just go ouch and then immediately fall over. If you don't, you have to take down all that HP. So that's going to be a much faster fight for Beer Nerd than it will be for Boney. And that's going to be very, very unfortunate. And only getting a life staff for it. So it's not going to matter that much. There might even be a world in which Boney skips it trying to take a risk, but that is going to be much slower form. Beer Nerd, however, going to head down here and going to take on this tower, going to get both of the key item checks here out of the way. Yeah, we're at the point where uh, there's not too many options left to go. We're still look looking for kind of, we're not really looking, have to look for it, but a pan might be one of the chain items that will get you uh, the following full-up key item, required key item to complete the seed. So this but one you have when you ha usually in, in a completion list you might want to consider like go, going up the tower but a lot of runners will try to defer doing tower until they get the tower key and given that we are guaranteed that tower since we got the tower key from the moon yeah deferring what is the smarter play in this in this case so sometimes in this in so sometimes you can it's not the worst idea to defer, but sometimes there's a worst case scenario where the tower key is literally from the Dr. Glue Lay spot, which is right now super vanilla and shouldn't be too long for this world as as uh, the characters are have done their essentially their moon grind and can, can take care of practically anything that comes in their way. Boney looked for a second there like he was going to head back down to Earth and is deciding to go back over to Cave Valley. I'm like, no, no, go back down to Earth. This is the time when you would want to make that risk. Unfortunately, he doesn't know that because he doesn't have the sight that we have over how the seed is going. But, you know, that could have been an interesting way of catching up some time there, taking that risk. But just going to play it safe, go through the rest of the moon. Definitely a good decision but it is going to take him a little bit of time to get true to this Karate HP. And the Beard Nerd is on Dr. Dialogue first phase right now, which should go down pretty quickly. I think we, uh, for Boney, I mean, the time to chew through the HP of the slot is probably not the issue. It's more of kind of the uh, the spot is kind of unbalanced due to it being uh, primarily a magic spot, actually, which ironically doesn't have that high spell power as the blarg that would normally come from the bahama spot isn't actually you know quad nine debt level it's just it's actually a little it's kind of it's almost kind of like the level of wyvern so it's it's it hurts but it it doesn't hurt as much as you as you think it would normally be i mean you normally normally you would you would have everyone with Reflect, uh, Bahamut, ref uh, Mega Nukes gets Reflected, and you see Quad 9 on Bahamut, but the da actual spell power of Bahamut is not as high as you as one would have expected. So, but still should be able to take, take it down, and I missed the key item that just quickly, briefly blipped. Well, we are getting the Wonders of Poison Walk. That was a pass over on Lugay's side, so that's going to be very, very good for Beer Nerd. Not going to have to go back up and walk through this moon. Um, thankfully, we don't have the audio from Beer Nerd's side right now because Poison Walk is a very unfun experience to listen to. Uh, so there will be no deedling around today over here. And we're going to see who's in the Super Cannon Room. It is the Kaipo Guards, which will be a very quick, quick, quick fight. 
It's not even just the boss. It's the spot has only less. It's less than 600 HP total. So split amongst the uh, small the bosses. It's it's yeah. It's just just uh, even I think Fu can contribute. I guess just bonking him. I mean that's how that's how much HP they do has. Not not much to speak of and. And then right now, looks like Boney is going to Earth. We'll see what the first thing that I most likely to do the tower because I mean that's the all, that's the major key item picked up f from it all, and probably the fr best to investigate as is this is a required objective. So, hoping for a ho a good chain that will keep, um, gain regain some simply regain some time. Yeah, I think. This is going to be an important moment right here because um, what you get out of this tower key, if it's a twin heart, then you're kind of forced to immediately go to twin heart. If it's not, then Bear Nerd has a lot of options on the table. Because if this is not a twin heart and it's not a pan, then it's either a dud or it's a terminal key item, either sand ruby or adamant, and you don't turn in that adamant. You don't bother going for another Excalibur at this point. And... I think that's kind of an interesting situation of where do you go from here. I think probably the Fey March bosses are going to be next on the table, but because I don't think that you take that valid Odin even with power overwhelming unless you have to. Yeah, I, th I mean you have you have two bosses versus one, and you might as be going to do with the check of convenience. Oh, and the Bahamut for a Radia not in seed. Oh well, I, I think just cleaning up the underground makes the most sense at this point before going on the overall. If, if that actually ha has what you have, what you need. So I mean, this so effectively three checks for one key item, required key item, and there just there isn't too many things left. I mean, could, I mean, worst the one of the wor I guess not a worst case, but a possible case is that whatever's at caveman. Ex Magnus leads into Pink Tail, which that could be a case. So those th three bosses left for Beer Nerd, whereas Boney has still has was still a completing sealed cave, which which is completely which is totally required. And I do like I actually like Poison Walk music. That's it's not not a hard it's not a harsh sound. I, I've seen I, Poison Walk in uh, in the other Fall Fantasies probably not so exciting. Here it's. It's, it's it's the song of someone's people. But if you did like the visuals of Poison Walk, how about visual flashing Poison Walk on the way down the Fey March, which is everyone's favorite? We are going to see getting through this goal best here. Um, there are two key items required to finish the seed, so I think no matter what, Beer Nerd is probably going to take both of these bosses. You know. If it was just Cave Magnus, then get the uh, get the Twin Heart and leave. But with that Pink Tail, we're gonna see both of these here. Yeah. Uh, so, so Beer Nerd, because you, I know Beer Nerd, uh, I think I think Beer Nerd is like uh, doing Poison Walk not just for the fun of it. Although, I mean, it's kind of distracting. I mean, the screen goes a little bit blurry. Uh, it's a, I, I, I actually like the effect, but uh, this. But the benefit of that is that uh, one of the things that you that takes it take, poison takes advantage of is status priorities. So things like death and stone have the highest priority because, uh, well, you know, death is death and stone is stone. But uh, so what? But paralysis is in low is actually lower than poison. Poison is higher up, so poison takes precedence. So you so paralysis cannot be applied. So it's one of the it's so taking advantage of that is is allowing um, the early star veils and that allows that allows um you know the time because uh, Golbus he's in this spot is pretty in the live so it's pretty fast not so not the most damaging spot be, uh, uh, and Edge is no we don't need the star veil on Edge because he uh, Edge has the adamant and why bother. Yep, and down goes the Golbez with the Y over on Beer Nerd's side, and we'll see what the reward is here. Um, that is going to be a pink tail. So that is Adamant Armor number three and objective number seven over on Beer Nerd's side. I think it's Rubicon time. 
We're going to go ahead and get through that and see what that ends up being. And that's going to set the tone for the rest of the race because there's only there's only two terminal key items left and there's only two spots left. So no matter what, one of these uh, one of these ends up being the way to that twin heart. Yeah, so uh, for people wondering, Berserk is actually one of the lowest uh, status spells. It's actually only slightly above Gradual Petrification, but Gradual Petrification, but gradual petrification leads to Stone status. So if you're just, just for just so you know, uh, if you are resistant to Gradual Petrification, you're resistant to Stone, and vice versa. So, so anyways, but Berserk. Is at is one of the lowest, but you can. But despite uh, Berserk being technically uh, higher than Gradual Petrification, uh, Gradual Petrification Gradual Petrification has priority. So Berserk uh, does is, is technically the lowest sp uh, status on the totem pole. Uh, that that is affected by all the other status. So if you're not healthy, you can't be Berserked. It's as simple as that. I mean, you can. Um, I mean, even though uh, be, uh, being in critical status is not a, is not a real status; it's just a visual status, and that 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 is that it, and that doesn't affect that doesn't affect anything. And there it is: uh, the strange power couple has the rest of the key items that we need for this seed. How about that? And that is go mode for beer nerd, and I kind of expect that Boney will probably head there afterwards as well will probably be go mode for him and you know his gambles in not taking that Baron castle early on in a few other things as well have kind of paid off for him a little bit but just the power of Cecil has kind of erased some of that lead unfortunately but definitely still in it you never know what's going to happen on these Z fights this is probably about as close to an easy Z fight as you can get, but, you know, there's always a chance for something to go wrong. I mean, yeah, I mean, the Big Bang doesn't, Big Bang is still strong, and if you, and if you're not careful, you can, you can still wipe to a Z with having all the adamant armor because you, getting careless can, can make, can make an easy fight, uh, look, look, uh, different than it would normally would be like i admins could usually good enough and you can probably just hold data win or well ideally berserk the character do complete uh zerk all the characters just for fun and be fine but i th but we still have we still have to uh do harp and we'll get some music because harp music is a uh, probably good soul music uh, i'm not sure so maybe soul music is maybe not the right word but it's certainly certainly uh tickles my heart soul music only if you get like i don't know i i would imagine that probably like the runaway five theme and earthbound is probably in there somewhere it is hard to say there's so many songs in this heart pool i want to give a shout out to um xenocat who's been contributing a lot of heart songs to the pool lately and their work has been amazing on it as well as Comlamity who has done a lot of the heart work as well so shout outs to both of them for all of their work on the heart pool because honestly this is my favorite easter egg in the game and I'm always very excited to see this yeah it's like I don't know the exact number but certainly in the hundreds so you will get a good variety when you roll a seed worth the time Well, we're about to be there, so let's go ahead and take a listen to this as we wait for food and just cast a nuke on himself and get through into this heart song.
Uh, good old Super Mario RPG music as we get an unfortunately free boss there to not really take advantage of it. Uh, and there's an adamant for an Excal that we are not going to see because you don't sit through that cutscene when you already have an Excal on Beer Nerd's side and you're not going to sit through that cutscene to get an Excal when you don't have a Cecil on Boney's side. So that is going to be full on go mode for beer nerd he's very 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 close to that uh uh troya pass location as well so he's going to be in that z fight very soon yeah and bony is doing the baron check which unfortunately will bear out nothing that he nothing he wants at this moment and then we'll find the cecil which might give him the idea oh if my opponent went this way well well, I'm sure. At least, if I were, if if I if I saw that Cecil late, it's like, yeah, that that could that could be the difference. Assume that it only assumes, uh, you know, his opponent uh, took it took that route, and which which he did. And given what what you've seen, the rest of the seed pro it favors <laughs> favors Cecil a lot, especially with the with that um, essentially Cecil starting room <laughs> in the ribbon room. And I guess it's that time of the of the time of the match uh i think it's it's i see a lot of z's uh, i don't know it's the afternoon in the u.s and i'm not i don't feel that tired but uh do but uh yeah it's the question and uh and uh, do you want to ask the question absolutely we have hundreds upon hundreds of sprites in this pool over 550 contributed by wonderful as always scala kitty as well as a few by board himself and that leads to an important question that we have here every single race here at this Aroma spot, here where we can't move the boss because he wouldn't be fair anywhere else, here at the only place where you can actually have that fight. And that question is, whose butt are we going to kick today? Uh, side questions such as, uh, does it have a butt? Is it cute? Does it have more than one butt? Uh, it, questions, uh that uh can can be curious but uh it's fine call it we'll see what z is today it's so it's, it's and a lot of a lot of art went into this so we'll see lots of little questions as well like will this be an existential horror that haunts my dreams for the next week like the majora's mask moon sprite and instead it is ultimishimus from final fantasy 8. That looks cool. No, it, it, it should play it at some point, Final Fantasy VIII, but uh, yeah. It, certainly, a lot of good art goes into this. Uh, I can't draw, so I can't, I can't speak for... I can't imagine the work that, come, that is required. Uh, and Scalability, one of our admins, contributes quite a bit to that. Uh, I think Board, has, uh, Board himself has added some artwork too. Yeah, we did have one uh, board sprite on the uh, restream yesterday in the afternoon as well. Uh, that was a good time to shout out, by the way, if you want to get caught up on the races that we have already run. After about 24 hours, we do upload them to our YouTube channel, so make sure you give that a look. But we are going to see Beer Nerd get through this fight now at this point in time. This is not going to be a difficult fight on Beer Nerd's side, if I'm being entirely honest. He has three adamant armors, that Cecil's already swinging away. I don't think we're going to see a second Big Bang. Yeah, once you, once you have double Berserk, uh, you can let them do the thing, maybe at, maybe make food, do something, like, I don't know, duke, or just sit there, let them, let them do things, I don't know, it's, I mean, you could just ask Rosa to bonk things and let food do the healing, it's, either way, it doesn't matter, just let power overwhelming do its thing, because, yeah, why, why, why push buttons when you don't have to? 
I think in this case, I go for the comedy option of have food direct cast nuke onto Zeromus, just that you're getting those counter nukes to keep you on your toes a little bit. Just to really keep your senses sharp on getting through this Zeromus fight. Yeah. Uh, th this is a big bang. Uh, when you when you, when you cast magic uh, on Zeromus, uh, come, comes with a counter, and if you do it on the, before the first big bang, uh, it's what we can what we call a uh, nerf to big bang and it changes the multiplier from like a nine to a four that's which is that's over 50 percent uh reduction in uh spell power and we've already reached media phase so yeah it's okay the it's, the mop up is done and the flash boom bang and beer nerd has completed this seed so beer nerd will go up to one and oh here in this uh group and we'll get him in for an interview very shortly here. A very, very good run from him. And you know, that's just, that's the power of adamant armor. You know, it's, it's a very good item apparently, which, you know, we don't see too much because we don't usually get the chance. And we are joined now for an interview by Beer Nerd. GG's and congratulations on your win today. Hey, thank you very much. So starting off, I want to go back a little bit to one of the ways that sort of diverged in the early game. Uh, when you got that Baron key, you went through, you found that Cecil. What was going through your mind at that point in time in terms of what your next decisions needed to be? Um, well, uh, yeah, I found going to do the uh, the gated character checks first to get Cecil or Fuhr super helpful. So going to do those uh, first. So Baron key right away became an option. Um, even though I left Hook go for a while. Um, and then getting the Magma Key after that just kind of led me underground, I guess. Now, sort of follow-up question I have to that too that's worth noting is you had that adamant armor for that Cecil pretty early too, going through those trap chests on the moon. Uh, what led you to sort of decide to go through those trap chests there as your next option, as opposed to like, say, using the sirens that were in the Fey March or something similar to that? Uh, it is a little um, high risk, high reward, uh, I feel, to go through the trap chests. Luckily, I found the dragon chest second. Uh, finding that one first probably would have had to reset. But um, I, I think at that level, if you're going to grind King Ryu's, it's about as fast to do trap chests on your way down. Plus, you might find an adamant armor, which is pretty handy, it turns out. Yeah, who could say no to, I think that at the point, second adamant armor? Like, that was... Right. <laughs> yeah, three adamant armors at the end was kind of almost embarrassing, having. Just, I put it on Rosa, I had nothing else to do with it. Uh, was... You, you, you just... So when you went to Baron, it's because you really just wanted the character check to just... Regardless of whatever was... Whatever was there? Is the key uh, yeah, well, plus, if you have to do the hook route, putting on a couple extra levels doesn't hurt. Um, you know, so kind of gearing up for that. Plus, if you find a foo, that's super helpful going through the hook route. And I don't like uh, running through Cave Adeline twice, so that's probably why I didn't do hook uh, right away, even though I had exit on Tella. Was it was the same thought when you did Dwarf Castle? I think, on, I think it's the first thing you did. Yep, exactly. Yeah, and I certainly, I st certainly see it pay off for you. <laughs> Quite like, I mean, you got both. You literally, I mean, like, uh, even Boney got food, but you did, you did the, you did, uh, you got Cecil on top of that. So I mean, you got both those rest restricted characters that everyone would want in the seat. I mean, that absolutely, they're restricted for a reason. They're incredibly strong, and they just carry a seed. So sort of going back a little bit too into your um, decision making once you got underground, um, you went for that sealed cave check very early and that was ended up being a little bit of a rough fight at first and you definitely did an amazing job of getting around that. Uh, what led you to just want to plunge down that uh, sealed cave as fast as possible as opposed to say going for one of the other checks that was on the table at that point? Um, I, I guess it was probably a little overconfident. I. Uh... Uh, had a fairly strong Cecil, uh, who wouldn't have made it through that Odin fight. Luckily, Rosa came equipped with lit arrows, which obviously saved the day. 
Um, yeah, and then I, I just took a bad tactic at the first run at it, realized it thankfully fairly quickly, and uh, reset my party to have a good second go at that fight. Um, yeah, I think if I didn't have a, a Cecil with a crystal armor, I probably would have skipped that uh, and, and went to try and beef up a little bit more before diving down. But it was an objective, so felt okay enough to do it. Definitely, and you put on a very good show in getting through that. You know, I know there was a few of us who were thinking, you know, this is a very, very tough location, and I'm not entirely sure if this is possible. And you did absolutely great in sort of proving us wrong and getting through that in the way you did. I think I may have had a moon veil in the hole at that point, too. Oh, yeah, you did, because you got it going up uh, Tower of Zot from that flame dog trap chest. I remember that now. Right. I probably wasn't so worried about the punching per se. It was all that, that would the, the evil wall spot it is uh you, I mean it's very punchy. But I think I, I was more concerned. Would you survive to the point when to when Odin does the you know the sl the slashing phase, which probably would have wiped you because the spot had uh incredible amounts of magic. I mean, but but I'm getting. I mean, you had the you had the right tools. So I mean, that's all, and that's all that really matters. You, just enough to get by, and that's that was more than enough to probably spring you ahead, considering that I probably not the first thing I would have done. So yeah, I congratulations on on uh, doing on doing that. Hey, thanks. There, there was a lot of good tools there. I think I had really good uh, agility manipulation and a few other things that really, um, yeah, did help a lot. So sort of looking forward at this point in time into this tournament, you're in a you're in the Zeus Gauntlet group of course, which has quite a few big names in it as well. Is there any match that you have coming forward that you're particularly looking forward to out of that group? Um, I guess I've uh, you're right. I have seen or watched a few of these uh, people play before. Um, my match I think tonight against uh, Poorly Drawn Bees is going to be a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I, I guess I'm just trying to take them all. Uh, I'm excited to play the Seeds. Uh, this is a really fun flag set. Uh, I think I'm I'm just excited to play more Free Enterprise, to be honest. So uh, all of them, really. Yeah, it's certainly a valid, uh, valid answer because this group is pretty stacked and I'm very excited to see the rest of your races as well. well thank you very much. Um, I would also like to thank um, both um, Boney, my opponent today, uh, GG's to him, and... Uh, uh, thank everybody on the restream team and you guys for putting on such a good show and uh, everybody behind the tournament this has uh, been a blast so far i really enjoy this absolutely and uh death like did you have any other questions before we let beer nerd go here for the day no i'm good uh gg's again beer nerd for <laughs> that for a wonderful race thank you very much have a good rest of your day thank you you too and meanwhile, back over on Boney's side, we're about to get a reprise of Harp, so we're going to go ahead and take a moment to listen to that. He's going to be in go mode very, very shortly here. Well, he's technically already in go mode, but going to be finished quite soon here. Only needs to get to that Z fight now. That was that was quick, and now picking up the picking up the crystal soon after the key items picked up. Definitely not bothering to trade that in. Definitely, I think you know this is going to be one of those matches where you sort of look at the times, and there was a pretty large gap, but that wasn't for lack of trying on Boney's side. I want to make sure that we give proper credit to how hard he's fought on this fly. It's just his route did not play out in the same way that Beer Nerds did. And 
honestly, if this level of play is what we can expect from everyone in this tournament, then we're in for a very good couple of months here. Yeah, some, it is, sometimes it's just one decision. I mean, I mean, the off decision to go to Baron to pick up the Cecil to get the Magma Key to essentially cut through, cut through not needing to do the hook route. It save time, especially with the benefits of sea salt it gets amplified. I mean, you get you get the adamant early, then a fortunate uh, additional adamant drop. I mean, that just a uh, lot these the seed to be kind of got that through much just much even quicker pace. So sometimes, you know, things you do, the things you don't do, like things you don't do might save time, but things you do that you that would consume time would give you give you back your time in other ways so so, so you know the, like a lot of things uh you know rando rando be rando could, could just could just the well went the other way for doing for doing a baron yeah and this is one of those things you know where we talk a lot about the gambles that our runners can take and it is you know, it's really easy to stay risk averse. And I think taking that hook route was definitely a calculated gamble on Boney's side. Obviously, we'll find out in the interview after he finishes up here. But I think that was a smart gamble to take. It just really didn't pay off today. Yeah, for, I mean, in a, in a completion of seeds, um, uh, the, the key items really do drive a lot of where you want to go. Like, just sometimes you get the key item you need, the character you need, uh, and the act, like, just, be, and, you know, it's not, it's, sometimes it's when you do things, like, uh, I mean, Boney did the Baron check late, and what, obviously, at that point, would have done nothing, but, I mean, there's, that's just, that's just the way it rolls, like, you, you, you just, you just make the decisions that, uh, hopefully get you, get you there quicker, and sometimes, especially with, with skill, with equal skill, sometimes is is really just one decision that your opponent does that differs from you. That is the actual difference, and can't it's not it's not it's not a person's fault. You you did you did one thing, the other person did the other thing, and then you see what comes out of it. Sometimes, a lot in a lot of seeds, they just come back to the, they come doing the other the other runners uh what the other runner did, and it just hey, it's back to square one. It's a, then then it just becomes, did you execute better? And and that's and that's just as important. Yeah, definitely. And I think you know we're here in this Zeromas fight. I'm interested in seeing how much faster or slower this one goes because we talked a bit about um, we, we talked a bit about you know the second and third adamant armor not mattering as much. Boney only has the two. We'll see that difference as well as the difference between having an Ad uh, Excalibur Cecil versus a, um, I think it's possibly Gungnir Kane at this point. I don't think we found a better weapon for him at any point. Maybe, we've, no, we did find a Dragoon Spear. So he does have some pretty good weapons going on here. I think it's going to be really interesting to sort of compare and contrast these as kind of a learning tool here because that's going to be a big question is, uh, how much faster does that Excal Cecil make things? Uh, in my experience, usually a lot. But I mean, if Cecil never gets the kind of weapons, like, like if you're not guaranteeing an Excal or Crystal, then the math changes. Then he just becomes a cane that uh, in a cane level character. Yeah, cover is still useful, very important, but his power level literally becomes cane, and that that changes the math. But when you when you have all, when you have a Cecil, it, the difference is just the amount of power due to the equipment Cecil has access to compared to Kane. So it does. It's not that much s slower. It's just different, and I don't think it's, it's. And when when we go further in the in the matches, not not in the group rump, but in the brackets, the the Kane will be far more valuable. Right now, uh, Kane. If you can find if you can find a Cecil, you will more more than often not ditch Kane because they essentially have the same weapon set up to a point. Okay, so I I would I um in cases where you have unless you like 
like when uh, Boney found Cecil at, at the, essentially the end game. Cecil has no value even if you have all the equipment because then you'd have to do a second grind, and no one, no runner, in, will do a second grind unless it's unless it's unless you can do a slingshot, and slingshots not available, so that even uh, furthers the cause to you know just ditch, just ditch, get what you can get now and ditch um, when you when you have the opportunity. Yeah, definitely. I think this is, you know, kind of hitting on that too, you know, where you don't have the Cecil versus having the Cecil, as unfortunately Rosa does go down to a white, does have the uh, wall taken off before that lands there. That might be a little bit of a scary moment here, as this is a very, very fast Seromus. And I think it's probably, this is a good example of, hey, this is uh, brackets versus groups with this race right now, with the Seromus fight. You may have the Foo, but this side, team on Boney's side is going to be a lot more closer to what you're going to see during brackets than Beer Nerds was. And I think the speed at which our runners are getting through these, where, you know, everyone's going to be a threat who gets through the brackets. Everyone in these group stages could possibly be someone who gets through into those brackets, and everyone who gets through into those brackets could be someone who wins. And that's really exciting for me to see personally as a commentator and viewer more than an actual racer. And here we are at Rock's phase, so this is not too far. And no surprising, Fu is the one who could take who takes a nap, and that's fine. Well deserved nap. Uh, Keen Edge will solve it, solve all problems. I think the the uh, and there there he goes. And yeah, um, to. And GG Siboni for completing this seed. Yeah, and we'll get him in here for an interview very, very shortly. A very respectable 149.19 for the risks he took in the seed. Definitely a very good fight. And speaking of which, we are joined by Boney. GG's on a very well run race today. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it was uh it was a lot of fun on the moon. A lot of fun on the moon. <laughs> So I want to go back a little bit towards earlier in the seed when you decided to go down that hook route. What led you to that decision at that point in time? Um, yeah, at the time, knowing I either had going through Baron or a hook and feeling like I had the power to take hook route, I, I, I basically gambled on it. I was like, let's check shop. Let's just go down there. Let's just fade Baron. It just came down to that. Uh, I was pretty happy with the the characters that I had, so I just I just went for it. I mean, yeah, odds are it could have been magma, and at the end it was in fact magma. But yeah, it, it was a uh, an absence and gamble on power. Yeah, I mean it was definitely a good gamble. You were pretty neck and neck with Beer Nerd through most of the early game, even though you know you had to go down that hook route, which he had already uh, gotten the magma key at that point. So it was looking fairly close for a while. Unfortunately, that Cecil kind of pushed Beer Nerd over the edge there. But you know, real big respect for taking that gamble there. Yeah, it definitely hurt when I saw the Cecil. In my mind, I was like, wait, I've seen two Excaliburs at this point. And there's a Cecil here. So that kind of worried me. Um, but at the same time, all I can do is really just, just play my game and just go for it. I felt like at that point, fights were going quite fast. So uh, I wasn't too worried about like my play in general. The only thing that I was worried about, just the choice that I make um, that would cost me time. And I, it seems like that was the one thing that, that did it for me. <laughs> Usually I'm not one to take risk, but I don't know. This time I felt like, let's just try for it, go for it. It is a, a match after all, but it is what it is. And at the end of the day, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how I've, uh, how I've done. Yeah, I think um, the, bar uh, the Baron Trek probably confirmed, <laughs> conf like, I'm sure that was the back of your mind. Once you once you've completed Baron, it's like, oh, this is this is the thing that could happen if if my opponent did it. And I'm sure that I'm sure though I'm sure you um I'm sure that you didn't want to do Baron because I that that check probably would have taken quite a a, a little bit of time out, out, out probably from your routing. Yeah, yeah, it just seemed like uh, um. I already felt like I did so many checks on the overworld and I know I can go underground, so do I just go underground? Um, yeah, it just, it, 
it fits me usually to to just go for the Baron and know that I can just you know I I can most likely take it. I wasn't too worried about that, but yeah, <laughs> felt like taking a risk. Same with just taking Moon, just staying on Moon. I decided I'll do my grind there and take everything there. And in hindsight, I was thinking if I should have just taken down the Town of Monsters bosses, but which turned out to be two key items I actually needed, which never happens during practice, obviously. So that, that kind of stung as well when I realized, oh no, it's actually there. Yeah, that, that concentrated power couple of Golbez and Rubicant. I mean, who doesn't love those, those two? Great, it's great. The, the, the Golbat's actually on King Spot I've uh, ran into during practice, and I mean, this time I triggered the, the, the script, but last time during practice, I just, he just straight up killed himself by, uh, by the reflects. I had a move at that point as well, I believe, so I could have used that. Again, these are things that I'm thinking about in retrospect. I've had the Ice Claw, I've had the Moonville. Both of these would have made the fights doable, though I was around level 30. So my concern at the point was, do I even have enough speed? Are they just not going to outspeed me and I'm not even going to get them out off in terms of spells? But then I'm like, wait, I had Fusoya. These are all things that are coming to me as I am just reviewing the seed in my, uh, in my head. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, at the same time, I made the choices I made, and uh, I'm pretty happy to um, just have, you know, not, not necessarily have wiped to a fight or whatnot uh, in terms of gear that I've gotten, the way I've been building the, the team. Um, just a lot of, you know, like, minor choices, I feel, that would lead to uh, gaining a lot of time. And, you know, like, sometimes you, even when doing all of that, you don't know what's going to come up. You don't know which check is going to give you what. So I, I'm happy with the choices. Maybe even with optimizing what I was doing, I'm pretty sure Beer Nerd would have beaten me either way, uh, just because of that choice. Uh, but nevertheless, it was a it was a fun fun race, fun seed to uh, to kick things off for me personally. And congrats to Beer Nerd for uh, for taking it. And sort of on that note, you know, hitting on a good start. Is there any of the uh, upcoming matches that you have in this group that you're particularly excited about? Um, good question. I don't necessarily, I, I tend to um, only come in during tournaments these days. I, I don't really play in ladder or whatnot. And usually the names that I, I see in group are names that I usually see on, uh, on YouTube, for example, where I'm just, you know, just watching matches and, and all that. So in general, I'm just, I don't know, I'm just excited to play against anyone, really. I don't really have a, a, a you know, like uh, a preference in that sense. I'm, um, uh, I'm just, in that sense, I'm just happy to play along and I'm just looking forward to seeing how everybody plays and how they do. And, and yeah, I don't know. I just <laughs> don't really have a strong opinion either way. That's perfectly fair. Uh, Death like, did you have any other questions for Boney today? No, uh, Gigi's the Boney. I mean, just again, I mean, I, I'm happy you went to the hook route. I mean, you committed. That's a, and some, and better committing than to be indecisive that that's i mean a lot of things in free enterprise where you just need to make the decision do it and not and don't worry about what what the consequences are later and it didn't pay out but hey, i i applaud you for do for don't go on that route it's certainly if you like most people like well if uh you know a more less experienced writer would probably try to hope for a magma key somewhere else and it just happened that uh beer nerd found it so it's not your it's and not your fault for finding not for for not going to baron it's it, ha it happens and still it's still a good still a good run even with that decision yeah yeah and that's how i just look at it it's it, the choices i could make better choices if i could look into the future right but i make the choices based on what i have what i can do and um yeah i'm just happy with how it went um you know whether it's a win or a loss if, if a seed goes well i'm already uh pretty happy with how things went and um it is what it is at that point i'm just uh it, it it's nice to just kick things off it's on a loss but i do feel ready for the seeds i feel ready for the, the way the flags are set up and i'm just looking forward to uh playing my next match and taking what i've uh learned from this uh this race and putting it into the next absolutely thank you very much for joining us did you have any final thoughts or uh 
things you wanted to say before you head out today, Boney? Um, good luck to uh, all the racers today. Uh, I know there's a lot of matches coming up uh, today, um, one of which uh, within Sue's Gauntlet as well. I wasn't really sure which match. I believe Bernard is actually playing another match, isn't he? <laughs> so good luck to him on that. Um, and yeah, thank you guys for uh, for the host and uh, making sure uh, everybody is uh, comfy cozy watching the matches. Thank you very much. And with that, I believe we are getting very close to wrapping up here today. Before we go any further, I want to give a quick shout out to all of our remaining matches that we have today on our various channels. At 6 p.m. Eastern, we have BG Rich 419 versus Lady Id 19. Uh, here on the Free Enterprise channel. At 7 p.m. over on RPG Limit Break, we have Cubs Rule 21 versus Y2 Sky. At 8 p.m. on Free Enterprise 2, we have Curios versus Arusta. And on 10 p.m. back here on Free Enterprise, we have Pyre versus Fried Potato. All of those are very, very exciting matches for me personally, so I hope to see you all there for them. And uh, I think we're uh, about done here. What do you think, Deathlike? Yeah, um, congrats to our runners, and uh, yeah, well, hope to see see some of you uh, watching the next <laughs> the next series of games back to back to back. That's a lot of things, a lot of things going on today. So keep watching, and uh, see you next seat. Don't spoil this see this race to others. Um, there is a there's a specific Discord channel for that. If you if you like, want to talk about it, it's probably it has its own thread. Uh, just don't spoil it for anyone. Let let people watch you know uh, what their the results on their own time. Absolutely. And speaking of no spoilers, we are going to be sending you all over to Xenocat stream. Uh, Xenocat is running the seed of the week. If you do not want to be spoiled on that, uh, we will catch you all later. Hopefully, for one of our remaining races that we have today, that would be your chance to hop out. And yeah, for myself, for Deathlike, for Judge Joe on the tracking and for Dishmu on the restream. Uh, thank you all for showing up today and uh, best of luck to you all.